Who are the most underrated teams this fall? Well, I don't know that quite yet, but I can tell you a few I have my eye on. West Virginia is one of them. West Virginia, I know there's a lot of drama and intrigue up there about whether we'll get the coal black uniforms this year, and I am paying attention to that with bated breath. But they were 9-4 and four last year, yet their over-under win total is only 6.5 for this upcoming season. So I look at that and I think... Shouldn't that, shouldn't that be a little north of seven, maybe? Possibly, I don't know. They're eighth on defense, or at least they've got eight returning with starting experience. They're 24th in overall returning production, and they're third offensively in returning production. Like Garrett Green's a really solid dual-threat quarterback. Accuracy needs to improve, but last year they won nine games. They were only 50th in turnover margin. So sometimes teams overachieve because they're just like, plus 20 for whatever reason in turnover margin, and they crash back to earth the next year. I don't think West Virginia is going to crash back to earth. They got a really tough travel schedule every year because of the conference they play in, but, man, it's just going to be a bunch of one-possession games either way, and I, I really like an experienced team with experience at quarterback to be able to handle themselves there. A whole lot north of six-and-a-half wins. That's a, that's a totals bet that I've already put in for myself. Nebraska? Also, probably underrated still. Now, they're a 5-7 and seven team last year whose over-under win total for this year is 7.5. So let's dive in a little bit. Go over and look at S&P Plus in the preseason. Number six defense coming into 2024. They've got an elite defensive staff. I've talked about them ad nauseum. You know how much respect I have for Tony White and the guys up there. They're number three in the country in returning production this upcoming year. And the only offensive production they lost is quarterback, and they needed upheaval at the quarterback position. Insert Dylan Riola. He's going to be a true freshman. He'll take his lumps. But the way I look at it is if I get B-minus to B-level quarterback play from Riola, man, that's good enough to win more than seven and a half games. And also, they miss Michigan, they miss Oregon, and they miss Penn State in the regular season. So I expect fairly significant improvement as well as record improvement for Matt Rule and the boys this year. They open against UTEP, got Colorado week two, and that's going to have a lot of eyeballs on it. But like I said, I think Sunday night, or maybe Tuesday when we did the extra podcast, listen to the beginning of their schedule. They got UTEP, Colorado, Northern Iowa, Illinois, at Purdue, Rutgers, at Indiana. Those are seven games that they are likely to be favored in. Let me check myself on that at least six of seven, perhaps all seven, they may be favored in. It gets a lot tougher at Ohio State, UCLA, at USC, Wisconsin, at Iowa, kind of like an Ole Miss schedule a couple of years ago where you wondered, can they just take care of the over early? Um, sometimes it doesn't work out that way. But, man, I think, I think Nebraska probably a little bit underrated. Georgia Tech, I could also call a little bit underrated. Now, the difference with Georgia Tech is the schedule is – it's it's – Pretty stiff, I'm not going to lie. Plus, you know they've got Georgia every single year. But they were 7-6 and six last year. Their over one win total is 5.5, I think due in large part to how tough it is. Haynes King is still there. That's their quarterback. Uh, their offense top 10 in returning production this year. Pretty deep wide receiver room. Defense was bad last year. 123rd in yards allowed, I believe, something like that. So they overhauled their staff. On the defensive side, they overhauled their roster on the defensive side. So kind of the inverse of Nebraska in that if I can get, I don't know, C-plus to B-minus level play defensively, then I should be good enough to win over five and a half games. I know what's happening right now. USC fans are listening and saying, oh, 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 oh. So, so you're just going to blindly assume that they get a lot better because they made moves defensively and we don't? We're going to have this out, you and I. Uh, no, I'm not blindly assuming. I'm saying you guys aren't trying to win six games out there. Georgia Tech's trying to win six games. That would be the over. And so it's a little bit lower bar to clear here. This is the part, if you're new to the show, where I, I hope to know the audience so well, I just know what they're saying. I know what my USC fans are saying right now because some of us aren't even on speaking terms. That's a long summer, so we'll be fine but not even on speaking terms right now. So don't freak out if you think I'm talking to myself and having a conversation with myself. It just sounds that way. That's not actually what's happening. But yeah, schedule is tough. You just saw it there. Colin showed it to you. But it's doable. I think it's doable. Uh, Iowa State, absolutely they're going over seven and a half. This is, uh, this is a Matt Campbell revenge year. Uh, a good old MCRY, as we call it in the business. 
S&P Plus just flat out has him 22nd in the preseason. I don't know where the JP poll has him yet, but just to give you an idea, in S&P Plus terms, Iowa State is sandwiched between teams like USC and Miami coming into this year. Did you know that? Do you think that about them? Number two team in the country, returning production. No, top five both sides of the ball in returning production. The vibes in the building are immaculate. Spent a whole day up there last month. Loved everything I experienced. Love everything I felt. Rumors circulating on the internet about Rocco Becht and Sidney Sweeney. And I am here to baselessly fan the flames of those rumors. Because I don't care if they're false, okay? Because when it comes to my quarterback, and Rocco Becht is my quarterback, I will propagate any online rumor it takes for us to win football games. And by us, I mean us. Because it is a we year. It's not a they, okay? They went 7-6 and six last year. We could win the Big 12 this year. And lastly... I want you to just take one eye, pick which one, take one eye, just keep it on USF. Because there's that, you know, every, every year you start to hear a faint drum beat, kind of a hoof beat off in the distance, and you start to think to yourself, who is that? Well, this year, it's USF. USF won seven games last year. That's tied for most since 2017. Hey, played Alabama tight as well. Probably one of the more hideous football games I've seen in the modern era, but at least played them close. So, um... I don't have an over-under win total for him because FanDuel hasn't put it out yet. Don't worry. That will happen very soon, I am told. USF, I would like to ask you guys, especially in my G5 community, what is the most underrated G5 team coming into 2024?